Psalm 44. I think this should be the last Psalm for the year. <laughs> One nation without God. And it actually the background, the background was a situation when an occasion when, when the nation uh, had some very difficult uh, times and they, they, it was a national disaster and so on. And if you just do a quick reflection, you can think of the time when they were sent into exile. The northern kingdom into I mean, uh, Assyria and then the southern kingdom into Babylon. And it was very, very difficult. And the nation was far away from God. So one preacher, one preacher, he entitled this Psalm uh, 44 as Psalm, you know the song, Song Sang Du. Song Sang Du by New Diamond. No, no, no. no. Song Sang uh, He entitled his <laughs> sermon Psalm Song Du. Okay, anyway, you don't know that one, okay? You're, you're so, you are so pure, you are so holy, you don't know this one, okay? One nation without God. And it is a community lament. So it, it wasn't just uh, the lamentation of one person. It is the whole community. Because the whole country suffered. So the first part, they recall God's help. What did God do for them in the past? Remember. I think it's good when you're down there, please reflect all the goodness of God, His blessing. Number two, verse 1 to 8. Secondly, lamented over the present situation. Verse 9 to 16. So if I recount God's goodness over the past so many years, then I cannot understand the present because I, presently I'm going through difficulties. Presently I'm going through so much pain. If God, you can help me in the past, why can't you help me now? Why am I going through all this? So that was lamenting over the present situation. And then still, <coughs> verse 17 to 26, the last part, still call on God for deliverance. He still, they still trusted on God for deliverance. So Psalm 44. So again, to the chief musician, a contemplation, a psalm of instruction, a psalm of teaching of the sons of Korah. If you read your center margin in contemplation, they also use the word masculine. Masculine. But then when you don't know Hebrew, so you just use contemplation. Okay. So, verse 1. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in the day in their days, in days of old. Now, Israel, one thing they are good. All the years before all these printed Bibles and, 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 and books and so on. Of course there were books and all this print, but I mean it's not like everyone can just go to a bookstore and buy a book. So how did they cast down the, the goodness of God, the miracles and, and the, the wonderful things that God had done for them? By word of God. So throughout the generations, the fathers who pass on their children and then the children pass on to their next generation and so on. So all this had been passed down. And so this generation here, as Psalm 44, they said, we have heard with our ears, O oh God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days, in days of old. So you and I got something to learn from this. Please share with your children, your grandchildren, the goodness of God in your life. What God has done for you, done for your children, done for your whatever. Share with them so that they know. And in some families, uh, they, they, they know, you know, my grandfather was a pastor, my father, I don't know what, what. So, all the, the things that flow down. 
Well, of course, if you're Kanye, has been a, 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 a line of mafia, and so they also know, like, you know, my father great the super godfather, then godfather, and so on. But the goodness of God shared with you. And so, I, sometimes I mumble a bit, I crumble a bit, but I'm not alone, you also crumble. You say, why, Pastor, every Sunday, uh, I keep talking about history, and so on. Uh, but it is necessary. It is necessary because ten years down the road, nobody, if nobody can remember how this church came about, how this structure was up, and what we have done, and and what how God has used us, and, and so on, and, and the miracles that happened within this ministry, then I think it will be very sad. I, I I think it's not that we are sad; it's that God the Father will be sad. You know what I mean? All this goodness. And the people, they have forgotten. They come to church, they worship, sing songs, have a good time, but they forgot about this goodness. So we must continue to recall the past. Verse 2. You drove out the nations with your hand. And this refers to the people of uh, Canaan. You drove out the nation with your hand. Not hands and with your hand. But then you planted, you afflicted the peoples and cast them out. So this was during the time of Moses and during the time of Joshua. And you know it's very clear. It, it, it wasn't Moses, it wasn't Joshua who, who, who delivered the enemies out. It was God. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword. That means Joshua and his army, they went to the south, then they turned around, conquered the south, went up to conquer the north and so on. But it wasn't by their own military might. It was God. Nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance. Because you favored them. So in my Bible, I underline favored. If God's favor is not upon us, for ourselves, personally, for our families, for our work, for our ministry and so on, we will be very pitiful. Right? But God favored us. It was God who gave the land to Israel. And that's why they cannot and they should not simply give it away so freely. They cannot. God gave it to them. So, verse 4. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. So, the psalmist, the psalmist, uh, I mean, this uh, sons of Korah, even as they wrote this psalm, they had still the confidence in God. So because of all that you have done, you are still, you, you are my God, you are my King. And of course this points to Jesus. Jesus the King. But here in verse 4, you are my King, O God. Command victories. Command victories means what? Give you you, 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 you you just say a word, you know, just command. The enemies will be put down. Command victories for Jacob. Jacob is not referring to a person. Jacob is referring to the nation of Israel. Through you, we will push down our enemies. Through your name, we will trample those who rise up against us. <coughs> Through you. For us is in the name of Jesus. Okay? Verse 6. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. So what can my arrow and bow and my sword do? Yes, they can hurt the enemy, but I will not put my trust in them, but in you. So you know Zechariah's Zechariah uh, 4 verse 6 yeah, Not by might, not by power But by He 
Holy Spirit. Verse 7, But you have saved us from our enemies and have put to shame those who hated us. In God we boast all day long and praise your name forever. So, this is recognition of God's provision, God's protection, not on their own ability. So, this is the first one. The first section being calling God's past help. Now, the second section, lamenting over present situation. So, with all this good past, wonderful past, then the present circumstances, uh, I cannot understand. I cannot comprehend. It's unintelligible to me. So, verse 9. But before that, got sila. You know sila, right? Pause and calmly think. Okay? Pause. So, they sing our way, they pause. But you have cast us off and put us to shame. And you do not go out with your with our enemies. Now, okay, well, now, now, now you have cast us <coughs> off and put us to shame. And you do not go out with our enemies. You make us turn back from the enemy. When you turn back from the enemy, it means what now? In defeat. <coughs> in defeat and in shame. Because you do not, in battle, you do not turn back turn your back to the enemy, enemy, right? You face the enemy. But you make us turn back from the enemy. And those who hate us have taken spoil from themselves. You only take spoil when you have the victory. So if the enemies take your spoil, that means what? He has overrun you and taken things from you. And those who hate us have taken spoil for themselves. You have given us up like sheep intended for food and have scattered us among the nations. What does this remind you of? Exile, right? Exile. They were scattered to Assyria. They were scattered to Babylon. And they were slaughtered. The Assyrians were merciless. I tell you, they were more merciless uh, than what you see in the Middle East now, the ISIS. That's how merciless they were back then. Uh, if you remember, uh, I mentioned they will cook, they will bring, as they bring them, they cook them, nose or mouth, and then they eat them. Okay? But Syrians also deceive people. And that's the one. Don't suggest this to the ISIS. <laughs> yeah, or some in some cases they like satay and they poke they, they, they poke through a, a person. The serious were terrible. So you have given us up like a sheep intended for food. Verse 12. You sell your people for next to nothing. You are not enriched by selling them. It's not that God sold away. Sell and then get Okay? Here is the northern kingdom. Now, the Syrians pay me some money, take them. But that's how they felt. They felt like they were so, you know, like slaves. Slaves, right? Because now they are in Assyria, they are like slaves. So they felt as if they have been sold. You sell your people for next to nothing and are not enriched by selling them. You make us a reproach to our neighbors. A scorn and a derision, which is mockery, to all around us, to those all around us. You make us a byword among the nations. So you look at the few words uh, reproach, scorn, derision, byword, all not good words. But these are the words that they felt describe their situation the most. By word is like, just pass by and look more for what forgotten already. Okay? And they have been mocked and, and, and scorned, scolded and so on. And not only that, a shaking of the head among the peoples. You know, when you pass, when, when, when you do something wrong, people look at you, and, uh, you know, 
they, they remake their judgment. So they shake their heads. The shaking of the head among the peoples. My dishonor is continually before me, and the shame of my face has covered me. Because of the voice of him who reproaches and reviles, because of the enemy and the avenger. So, this was the current situation that the Israelites were facing while they were in exile. Okay? While they were, not before the exile. Before the exile, they forgot about God. But now they in exile, then they say, hey, why like that? Singapore, Singlish, right? Why like that? So the last one, last section, they still call on God for deliverance. Verse 17 to 26. All this has come upon us, but we have not forgotten you, nor have we dealt falsely with your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way. So this is very clearly, is when they are in the ordeal, when they are suffering, then they are saying this. Not when they were in Northern Kingdom and in Judah, when they were having a time of their own. They never thought that way, but now they felt it. And they said, our heart has not turned back, nor our steps departed from your way. But you have severely broken us in the place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. So you have broken us. Broken us physically, maybe. Spiritually, you, you, you brought us to the point of brokenness in a place of jackals. Where is the place of jackal points to a place of ruins? You know, ruins? This run down, torn down, destruction and so on. You look at Jeremiah 9.11. Jeremiah 9.11 And in Jeremiah chapter 9 For the disobedience of Israel God will bring judgment And God said what? In verse 11 I will make Jerusalem A heap of ruins A den of jackals because it is all rubbish and all torn down and so on, men will not be staying there. But when men don't stay there, wild animals will go, right? Mm -hmm. So a den of jackals. I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. So, when they were all in exile, then the city of Jerusalem and, and, and so on, there will be ruins. And then the wild animals will be not only that, later in AD 70, the temple in Jerusalem was torn up until today. Actually, in, in Israel today, there are two groups of people. The one group who are the Orthodox Jews who still are, are waiting and, and, and praying for God to come to restore Jerusalem and the temple, to rebuild the temple. The other group of Israelites, they don't care too much about religious matters anymore. They are really quite a... It is quite worldly, unfortunately. But this is, these are the chosen people. So one group still, uh, Messiah, please come. Messiah not here. Messiah, please come. Restore Jerusalem, build the temple. The other group, Otah. They go on with their own life. But that's where... <clears throat> the gospel must be okay. to, 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 to speak, to, 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 to reach out to all these uh, people. So, back to Psalm 44. So, but you have severely broken us in the place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. So, very mournful, very sad. Nothing to celebrate. 
if we had forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a foreign God, would not God search this out? For He knows the secrets of the heart. You, you, you have a funny feeling uh, that they were trying to justify. You follow me now? Hey, but we didn't, we didn't uh, worship foreign God. Uh, you know, we, we did not forget you were God and so on. The best thing to do when you come to God is what? Just repent. Confess and repent. Don't, don't try and justify. They, they were trying. Right? Would not God, no, if we have forgotten the name of our God or stretch out our hands to a foreign God, would not God search this out? <coughs> For He knows the heart, the secrets of the heart. Yet, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. So they were persecuted. They were having a bad time, even in exile. But this also points to the future. In the future, during the tribulation, the Jews uh, who are not born again, of course, those, whether Jews or anyone who, who is born again, you will be raptured. You will be with Jesus. But during the tribulation, those who remain, they will be going through a very tough time, especially the Jews. Tribulation is all recorded in the Bible. And they will be persecuted. So yet for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake! Tell God, as if God is sleeping. Awake! <laughs> Why do you sleep, O Lord? Arise, do not cast us off forever. But God does not sleep. We look at Psalm 121, verse 4. Psalm 121, verse 4. It is just that the Jews were desperate, but God does not sleep. Psalm 121, verse 4, I preached some time back. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Not like security guards, they work on ship. Not my God. He watches over the city, over the, the, his people. So, arise, do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our affliction and oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust as our, our body clings to the ground. You know what is this? This is really humble, being humble. Our soul is bowed down to the dust. Our body clings to the ground. This is as low as you can get. And in the Eastern, Near Eastern culture, to really do that uh, is to really humble yourself. But either you humble yourself or you are being humble. And in this instance, they were being humble. Instead of standing tall and standing upright, they were down to the ground. Really, really shameful. That was really humiliating. Arise for our help and redeem us for your mercy sake. They said this because they were very sure that God will honor them. God will surely, surely redeem them. And we know, we know for a fact, you know, in Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22 to 25, Lamentation chapter 3, we have sung this, but whether you know the reference, Lamentation chapter 3, verse, verse 22, 22 to 25. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, my soul. Therefore, 
I hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. Yes, Lord, great is Your faithfulness. And we thank You, Lord, that Your mercies are new every morning. And so is Your grace and Your favour. Lord, we thank You for the year, even 2014, that through this year, Lord, You have taught us much, and I pray that Your Word will find root in our hearts and even in our walk. We shall apply them, Lord. We ask that You continue to guide us and lead us into the new year. And as we do, Lord, help us even in this season that we give, give of our time, our talent and our resource even to those who are in need. Help us to even spread the message that Jesus, you are the reason for the season. So we thank you and we praise you, wonderful God. You are good and that's all as much as we will say and evermore. You are awesome. In Jesus' name. Amen.